Hello and welcome to Baichu's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which amongst the following is the best description of Lasker Award? It is awarded annually to honor a living architect or architects. It is an award for achievements in newspaper, magazine and online journalism. It is a prize awarded annually to grassroots environmental activists. It is awarded to persons who have made major contributions to medical sciences. The answer to this is, it is awarded to persons who have made major contributions to medical sciences. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Lasker Award. What is this Lasker Award? This was instituted back in the year 1945 and is awarded to those people who have made immense contribution to the field of medical sciences and this particular award has also earned the reputation of identifying future Nobel Prizes. What do we mean by it? It means that once this particular award is given, they are given for those set of people who have made immense contributions to the medical sciences or who have performed public service on behalf of medicine. And for those people who have been given this award in the future because of the contributions, they may also be given Nobel Prize as well. That is why it is also called as America's Nobles. This particular award is administered by Lasker Foundation, founded by Albert Lasker and his wife Mary Woodward Lasker. The awards carry an honorium of $2,50,000 for each category which are specified under this award. Now let's look into the next practice question. Gita is a popular folk dance form practiced in the state of Goa, Himachal Pradesh, Odisha, Punjab. The answer to this is Punjab. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the India TV news makes a mention to the Gidda. What is this Gidda? This happens to be a popular folk dance form where in the state of Punjab. This happens to be an energetic dance form similar to that of Bangra where women in this particular dance form usually perform the dance during the festive and the social occasions. This happens especially during the sowing and the reaping of the harvest and at the same time there is feminine grace, elegance and flexibility to this folk dance which is practiced in Punjab. The Gidda basically depicts the stories of women lives including marriage, domestic life, so on and so forth and when it comes to this dance form, they usually wear the silver kameez as shown in the image which are bright in colors, they also wear jewelry as well. So remember, this happens to be a folk dance from the state of Punjab. Now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to scheduled tribes, which of the following statements is are correct? Presidential order under Article 342 regarding scheduled tribes is final. Court cannot add or subtract any entry. A person declared as scheduled tribe in one state cannot claim benefit of his status for employment, education or land allotment in any other state on migration. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is both. That is, both the first and the second statement is right. So, the answer to this would be C, which is both. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the scheduled tribes. When we speak about the constitution of India, has it given any criteria as to how the scheduled tribes can be identified? No. The constitution is completely silent about the criteria for specification of a community as a scheduled tribe. Then how do we identify? identify them. This is on the basis of historical background of the backwardness. So the primitiveness, the geographical isolation, the shyness, social education and economic backwardness, all this may be considered and ultimately a particular tribe can be added in the presidential order. So when it comes to the presidential order under 342, yes, it is final. The court cannot add or subtract any entry and the same was confirmed in the Supreme Court judgment of Basava Lingappa versus Munchinappa. So the first statement is right. When we look into the second statement, a person declared as scheduled tribe in one state cannot claim benefit of his status for employment, education or land allotment in any other state on migration. This is also a right statement. When it comes to the central government, let's say for example, there is a person who is from the state of Bihar. Let's say there is 
another person who is from the state of Maharashtra. Now, there is a central government job opportunity in the state of Maharashtra. So, it is the central government which has declared it. If it is the central government which has declared it, irrespective of which state that person belongs to, this person would be able to lay claim to it. That is, a person staying in Bihar can apply for a job in Maharashtra if the order is issued by the central government. Similarly, if there is a reservation that is required for the educational purposes. A person in Bihar can apply for a seat in Maharashtra. A person in Kerala can apply for a seat in Uttar Pradesh only if it is central government. But if it is to do with the state government jobs and reservation, either for the employment or for the education, he cannot do so. Which means a person, a domicile, a permanent resident of Bihar cannot use his migration, cannot go up to Maharashtra and ask for a state when it comes to the state reservation which means that he cannot apply for the employment under the SC or the ST and at the same time the same cannot be applied with respect to the educational reservation as well so remember when it comes to the central government he may do so irrespective of which state he belongs to but when it comes to the state reservation either for the employment or for the education a person migrating from one state to another cannot do so this was the second option says that a person declared as scheduled tribe in one state cannot claim benefit of his status for employment, education or land allotment in any other state on migration. And as part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section what are the constitutional provisions for the development of the scheduled tribes. Because UPSC in the past has asked questions like this, one with respect to education and so on and so forth. So we should also know which are the constitutional provisions for the development of scheduled tribes so please put them on the comment section now let's look into the next practice question consider the following statements natural rubber is a polymer of styrene rubber boat headquarters is located at Kotayam in Kerala the world's first genetically modified rubber plant was planted in the state of Assam which of the statements given above is are correct the answer to this is 2 and 3 only why have we taken this practice question because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the rubber when we speak about rubber the natural rubber is a polymer of styrene this is a wrong statement why because it is a polymer of the organic compound called as isoprene so the first statement is wrong when you look into the second statement yes rubber boat headquarters is located at kotayam in kerala the second statement is right so basically the rubber boat happens to be a statutory organization which is constituted under the rubber act of 1947 and this is under the administrative control of ministry of commerce and industry the board is headed by a chairman and this chairman is appointed by the central government and what are the functions of this particular board basically they will look at development development of the rubber industry they will try and encourage development research so on and so forth and ultimately they will collect all the statistical data of rubber and in case marketing has to be promoted the same will be taken up by the rubber board in india when we look into the third statement the world's first genetically modified rubber plant was planted in the state of assam this happens to be a right statement and as part of the assignment you have to put on the comment section which are the top rubber producing states in india now let's look into the next practice question how is permaculture farming different from conventional chemical farming permaculture farming discourages monocultural practices but in conventional chemical farming monocultural practices are predominant conventional chemical farming can cause increase in soil salinity but the occurrence of such phenomena is not observed in permaculture farming conventional chemical farming is easily possible in semi-arid regions but permaculture is not so easily possible in such regions practice of mulching is very important in permaculture farming but not necessarily so in conventional chemical farming select the correct answer using the code given below the answer to this is b which is nothing but one two and four this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2021 now let's look into the fact of the day the fact of the day for today's discussion happens to be MRSAM what does it stand for it stands for medium range surface to air missile what is the context we had the DRDO which recently successfully conducted test flights of the army version of the medium range surface to air missile where at the integrated test range Chandipur 
of the coast of Odisha. What exactly happens? Let me simplify this process for you. Let's say there is an aerial target. The aerial target may be approaching towards the land. So what will this do? The medium range surface to air missile will be immediately launched and this will hit the aerial target. So basically what would happen? You would have the MRSAM which will be hitting the aerial target. It will intercept and destroy the aerial target. The MRSAM is jointly developed by DRDO and the Israel Aerospace Industry and it includes the multifunction radar, mobile launcher system as well as other vehicles. When we speak about the mobile launcher, it can transport, place and launch as much as 8 canisterized missiles. These missiles can be fired in a single mode or it can also be fired in a ripple firing mode. What do we understand by ripple firing mode? Basically, when we speak about ripple fire, it is the firing of the weapons in quick succession. So when we have a single mode, a single missile will take off but when we have ripple mode, it will be usually about 5 to 6 or 8 missiles which will be launched simultaneously. Then we also have the radar as well. The radar basically will help us tracking and identifying the aerial target and with the help of the radar, what we would be able to do is hit the aerial target. The length of the missile would be about 4.5 meters. It will have a weight of about 275 kgs and it is equipped with fins and cannons to stabilize its flight and also provide the maneuverability as well. And this missile is powered by a solid propulsion system and the missile can move at a maximum speed of Mach 2 and it can engage multiple targets up to a range of 70 km. It is this that we have to understand in reference to the MRSAM. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.